So once hydrogen could form, the universe went from a plasma, two plasmas, as I said, to a single gas of hydrogen. And that took about 380,000 years. It didn't happen instantaneously. Like It's much like a condensation process. As a layman, I understand the cosmic microwave background radiation to be the echo of the radiation from the moment the universe starts to cool. What is our current understanding of what existed before the temperature dropped enough for it to become visible? Ah, so that's another very astute question. Love so the CMB, or cosmic microwave background, are the oldest photons in the universe. So what we want to do is explain where do those photons come from? And why did we just get to see them as they were 380,000 years after the Big Bang? So those photons are really- Yeah, I want to see them 379,000 years after the Big Bang, okay? <laughs> well- so get, Come back on the show when you can tell me that, all right? Yeah, you need a time machine, and luckily okay. we have telescopes like this, time machines, or telescopes are time machines, right? So when we look at the CMB, we ask, where did those photons come from? And then, of course, we're going to ask, where did the matter and the plasma that made those photons, which is what they are originating from, where did that come from? Where did the thing that came before, where did the inflaton come from? I'm sure one of your audience audience is going to ask me that, right? So that's what we do in science. And we may come to a point where we have to throw up our hands and say, we don't know, but we're not ready to do that yet. Because in a sense, we haven't reached the limit of what data can tell us. So the answer to the directly answer to the question is those photons are the leftover heat that come from the fusion of, of hydrogen and its isotopes into helium, lithium, uh, beryllium, and the lightest, you know, five or six different elements on the periodic table. That occurred in the first few minutes after the Big Bang. And then there was really a plasma that the universe was too hot right after you nuclearly fuse, uh, and that's not a word, but you fuse together two protons, you are left over with enormous amounts of heat. That's how the sun produces uh, so much heat and light. Well, that heat and light doesn't allow atoms to form. So an atom is a bond binding of a proton and an electron that makes the hydrogen atom. So the nucleus of hydrogen is a proton, and then the electron come together. The universe was simply too hot. It was being zapped by photons. Anytime a hydrogen atom deigned to form, it would get immediately zapped apart, ionized, as we say. And that occurred until the heat cooled off due to the expansion of the universe. And that took 380,000 years. Yeah, so what did the universe look like before then? It was an opaque plasma. It was essentially two plasmas, a plasma of, which is a, the fourth state of matter. It's a purely conductive um, medium made up of pure protons or pure electrons, uh, charged particles. And charged particles are opaque. So a mirror is actually not a bad representation of a plasma. Plasmas reflect all the photons. And they, if there's enough plasma in three dimensions, unlike a mirror, which is two-dimensional, then the plasma will just keep reflecting the light. And it's kind of like a cloud or a, a three-dimensional mirror, if you will. The light can't escape. And then finally, the day came. And normally when we think of opaque, we're not thinking of a glowing object. So this is, right. this is a, a full three-dimensional glowing thing yeah. yes. that is the universe that you can't see through, much like, I guess, the sun. You can't yeah. see through the sun. You can't yeah, see yeah. through the because sun. It just you can't... traps any light that tries to... Any light yep. photons that hit it are just going to bounce around or just be... Yep. be... yep, it'll be a bouncing around. So plasmas are opaque but neutral atoms are transparent. So once hydrogen could form, the universe went from a plasma, two plasmas, as I said, to a single gas of hydrogen. And that took about 380,000 years. It didn't happen instantaneously. Like It's much like a condensation process. You have steam in a shower. If you ever go to a steam shower, you can't see through the steam. It looks like a fog. None of us but have ever showered. Uh... Yeah, so you better give an example there. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad we're not doing this in person, Neil. I'm glad we're not doing this in person. I've never seen a steam shower. Of course we've seen. What kind of quick? What? <laughs> have you ever been to a Turkish bath? That's uh, no, we, so... all... <laughs> we all have good hygiene, I think, in my audience here. But go on. Okay. So uh, you know that if you have a steamy shower and then you turn on cold water, the water vapor condenses and makes liquid. And then you can see in the shower. So that process, the analog of that process is the formation of hydrogen. Then the universe became transparent, and we see those leftover photons, which have their beginning in the fiery cauldron that produced the first elements on the periodic table. So I, I, I think it would be a cool trick if you could turn the sun into a transparent ball of gas rather than the plasma that it is. Yeah. And just watch that happen. And then yeah. it would just basically disappear, right? Yeah. And you get to see what was behind it. That's so right. Just pour uh, some that... cold water in there? Ah, that, that's all you need to so do. You just add a little bit of cold? <laughs> 
<laughs> in the in the plasma shower. R related to this, Eric Varga asks, why is there only one type of wavelength of light, microwaves, to see the cosmic background? Why do we not have ultraviolet or gamma or radio cosmic backgrounds? Love it. Love These it. These are great questions. Go for it. So I said that the cosmic microwave background, it is a relic at a temperature. I classified that by its temperature. The, the universe and the cosmic microwave background photons is an example of what's called a black body radiation source. A black body, uh, these were first discovered and their properties were explained by Planck in 1900. And they are reflective of the fact that any object made of ordinary matter. But don't use the word reflective in that sentence. Oh, yeah. Choose right. a different no, word. Yeah. Pun intended, Neil. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pun without discretion. They were uh, absorptive. Of, yeah, yes, no, that's ahead. right. <laughs> uh -huh. So they were, they are representative of the fact that you heat up anything, including a, an iron rod or a ball of, of hydrogen and helium like the sun to any temperature, it will emit a broad range of wavelengths. So in fact, there were originally wavelengths of light that were invisible because they were too short for the human eye to see. They were ultraviolet. They were uh, equivalent to the energy that's required to zap apart a hydrogen atom into a proton and an electron. So that, uh, that energy level corresponds to a wavelength of light that was very small. But since the universe has been expanding, all the wavelengths in that black body, which kind of looks like a bell curve, the distribution of energy versus wavelength, the peak today has been redshifted by 1,000 times the, um, the value that it had when the hydrogen gas first condensed 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Not 380,000 years ago, 13 billion, 800 million years ago. And so since that time, the universe has been expanding by a factor of 1,000, and it went from ultraviolet, and if you just do the math, the ultraviolet wavelength, expand it by a thousand times, you get about two millimeter wavelength, but that's just the peak. There are, uh, there, it's like a bell curve. There are indeed photons of shorter wavelengths and longer wavelengths in the black body distribution. So why doesn't anyone talk about them? Uh, because the, the peak is exponentially decaying on either side. So okay. you have massively easier time detecting the peak photons um, than you do of the shorter or longer ones. But in fact, uh, Penzias and Wilson did detect uh, the, short, the longer wavelength, less energetic photons, uh, to uh, almost 150 times lower in energy uh, than the photons that we detect today with our more advanced technology. Okay, cool. So we could, in fact, have a, ra a cosmic radio wave spectrum or a cosmic that's right. uh, infrared spectrum, but we don't reference it that way because that's that's the um, uh, the the emissions in those band passes is meager. That's right. And so yeah. you're really labeling it by. You know, also, when we talk about the sun, the sun peaks in the visible part of the spectrum. But I think if you add up all the infrared coming from the sun, is actually we have more infrared than visible light. Yeah. I, I think I did the math on that. Yeah, once. that's right. And you can but, detect but, it with your hand with your eyes closed. You don't yeah, I guess it. so. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> At least here What's in San Diego. Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah.